Hello, and welcome to another episode of Growing for Wholesale Standards. For today's episode, we're going to discuss the USDA grading specifications for acorn squash. Now before I get into the exact USDA grading specifications, uh, I like to share some tips and tricks and some reminders for you growers just to help you guys get the best quality graded number one products off of your field. Uh, so don't forget to check your soil and if you're looking to learn more about that, check out the video here. It's also in the description below. Don't forget to scout weekly. Again, that video uh, where we discuss this in length is in the description as well as up in the corner. And don't forget that your buyer has a very particular date in mind when it comes to purchasing your product. So work backwards, knowing how many days it takes for your produce to fully mature, and boom, you have your planting date. Okay, so here you can see the USDA grading specifications. I don't think it's too green, I think it's like just too big. So these here, but yeah, they... What I've seen here, they've got a little green on the end. Some of them got a little bit more green to them. Now remember, these just form the foundation of what most buyers use when it comes to grading. So before you begin selling, just make sure you know you, what your buyer expects your products to be graded like. Now in this show, when I talk about a USDA graded number one, I'm talking about the perfect produce here. I'm talking about grading uh, with similar varietal characteristics, uniformity. And we're looking for produce that is free from damage free from any wet breakdown, any scars, any damage from insects, any damage from freezing or mechanical or any means at all. A USDA number two is still just as safe to eat, it just suffers mainly from aesthetic damage. Now we're still looking for a lot of the same qualities here. Uh, we're looking for similar varietal characteristics and we're looking for produce that is not entirely free from it may have minor damage but scarring and insect damage produce that suffers from major damage from wet breakdown from rot from a animals biting on it uh, this doesn't have a grade and this doesn't have a grade because it shouldn't enter the market this is your hog feed this is your compost uh, when it comes to grading we're still sending our number twos and recently they've been finding their ways into wholesale markets. So still we're grading for a lot of the same qualities here just knowing that the more perfect USDA number one is going to your wholesale buyers top quality and your USDA grade number twos are mainly going to your food banks but like I said are recently finding ways into wholesale markets. Okay so following USDA guidelines you first want to wash your product and then if you haven't already done so while harvesting cut those stems down to an inch. You don't want them rubbing up against uh, the other produce in the box in transportation or on the way to the buyer uh, causing damage and degrading the produce along the way. Then comes the sorting. Following USDA guidelines you want to gently place your product into boxes and you want to Follow whatever your buyer guidelines are into how those should get boxed, whether you're boxing for a, a count or if you're boxing for a weight. Now, like any business, you want to build a healthy relationship with your customer. And when selling to wholesale markets, your buyer is your customer. Uh, and to learn and hear more about why that is so important to build a healthy relationship with your buyer, check out this video in the description below. But to sum up that conversation, uh, you know, when the buyer steps out onto the dock and they're opening up these boxes uh, and they see uniformity, they see presentation, and they see a box that really is, you know, perfect produce graded as a number one, you know, what they would hope to expect, you know, that goes a long way into building a healthy relationship and one that is very financially rewarding. Uh, on the other end, when uh, if 
growers, you know, slipping number twos into a box of number ones and the dock buyer, you know, sees this for the third or fourth time, that really hurts uh, that really hurts your business and that really hurts all the growers that you know are on that pallet that gets sold uh, to the wholesale markets because like Appalachian Harvest we work with 70 family farmers and to meet these large demands it's not all coming from one grower so we usually pass together these orders from a lot of different growers so one grower uh, putting too many number twos into a box can impact all the growers into that order. So it's really important. Uh, building a healthy relationship with your buyer is also building a healthy relationship uh, if you're using an aggregator distributor with your fellow farmers and your community. Just keep that in mind when really grading and sorting into these boxes. Okay, so we boxed it up and we're boxing according to whatever the buyer's needs are, whether that's a case count or a box weight. And then it's time to apply your labels. Now the first label you'll want to apply is your PLU sticker. If you're not required to place it physically on the produce itself, uh, just throw in enough to cover one for everything in the box, plus some extra just in case any get damaged along the way. And you want to place that on the outside of the box as your first sticker. The second label you want to apply after your PLU sticker is a trace of origin sticker. This uh, lets the buyer know where the product was boxed as well as it's certified organic or conventional. Lastly, you want to apply your traceback code sticker. And to learn more about that, check out the video in the description as well. And it's uh, up here in the corner. Well, I hope that helps. Any questions, comments, you, you know, throw it in the comment section. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. And stick with us. We still got some great episodes coming up. And I hope to see you guys next time on Growing for Wholesale Standards.